to take a moment to imagine what your version of success looks like. What does a successful woman look like to you? If I was to describe to you two women, one dressed in a pantsuit, hair slicked back in a ponytail, briefcase in hand, the second dressed like myself, perhaps a hand, matching handbag thrown over her shoulder and a laptop, which would you liken to be the successful businesswoman running four brand portfolios under her corporation? I wonder if, if you assumed the, uh, the woman in the pantsuit. In reality, she's just an entry-level accountant, and the CEO I described was, in fact, myself. My dad used to always tell me my grandfather's favorite saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Simple but powerful words. I challenge you to consider why you would assume the other woman. Did the mundane description or the pantsuit influence your choice? Don't get me wrong, there's some powerful women today who can rock a mean pantsuit. But the question is, do they rock it by choice? Aside from a couple industries like fashion, femininity and flair aren't usually associated with leadership and authority. Despite our advances in the workplace, we're still commonly required to sacrifice some things for success, one of which for women is often our uniqueness. And the never-ending pressure to blend in and conform, I personally feel, is a key problem. In most industries, we have a standard image of success. Women in tech is a popular topic as of late. Um, one of my brand portfolios is a tech startup. I'm anything but your typical tech founder. You can imagine um, how much I can stick out like a sore thumb at a tech networking event or conference. <laughs> I definitely get some looks. <laughs> Perceptions are a funny thing. On paper and in concept, they're really easy to point out, and um, fashion versus tech is obviously an, an obvious stereotype to, to acknowledge. But in the context of applying it to our own lives, that's when things can start to get sticky and blur. On the topic of women in tech, I'm sure Reshma from Girls Who Code will have some more reasons to add of why maybe girls might not pursue coding or the technology industry. But should one of them be that their interests or preferences don't align with the industry persona? If someone is passionate about pursuing technology, but then they equally have that bright, exuberant personality and flair, so they stand out like a sore thumb at those industry events. Should that discourage them from wanting to pursue that career? That may apply a lot for young girls who are trying to decide what their career could be or where they want to go, and that could certainly influence their choice. But in the context of how we're, when, we're, when we're growing older, women are progressing. We're gaining great self-confidence. We're becoming strong leaders, especially under younger generations. And we're getting that attitude and that go-getter attitude of wanting to go after our ambitions and, and achieve our goals. So some of those stereotypes and perceptions might not stop us. It didn't stop me. But the greater problem, the greater problem exists on those who believe that going after your ambitions but it's okay to sacrifice a piece of ourselves to succeed. I want to ask you to consider uh, that a girl who's very passionate about technology but has that flair like myself. I want you to consider what if, what if she lost, lost that piece of her? What if she got rid of her fashionable wardrobes and exuberant style? and for plainer look, muted her bright and loud personality for an ordinary quiet one, and pursued her career. Will she succeed? Maybe. She certainly won't stick out like I do at events. 
She won't be questioned by industry leaders of her credentials and, her, and if she's in the right place. Will she be happy? Probably not. You see, despite the success that she may gain or the superficial material values and wealth that she could achieve, there's always going to be that piece of her missing or that, that piece of yearning for more, of not feeling content and satisfied with the work that she's doing. In order to be an authentic leader, you first have to be authentic to yourself. When, as a particularly young uh, female and la a bright and bubbly personality and leader, I've personally struggled with this for quite some time. Uh, going up in school, I was bullied uh, throughout, throughout my life. I actually, despite who you see before you today, I was quiet and shy. I was a very studious girl, hid most of my emotions into my academics. Your total, uh, total overachiever stereotype of uh, hard-nosed um, school was my life. And if you were to ask me who I was, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. I had no grasp of my identity. I had accumulated the interests of anyone that was around me so I could fit in, so I could blend in, so I wouldn't be picked on. I had no authentic relationships. Yeah, sure, I had okay, acquaintances, you know, the, I could sit beside someone at lunch, but I had no one that understood me, no one that could support me in my time of need, or no one who could challenge me to push me to grow as a leader. Over time, maybe things bottled up and enough became enough, and I and that, that Kelly inside of me decided to start to come out. And slowly, I, decided, I slowly started to show my true colors. And as I started to blossom and show those true colors, that's when my leadership journey skyrocketed. As I started to show more and more uh, and accept who I was, I had greater energy, greater passion, and greater self-confidence in everything that I did. The more, and this reflected in my relationships, the greater my interactions became. I was able to develop a support network. I was able to develop peer groups that challenged me and create relationships that could propel me towards my goals. I stand before you today with a matching hair accessory to my outfit. <laughs> now, this, may not, this insignificant accessory has profound meaning. It's become a trademark look for me. If you were to look at any photos online or meet me in any setting, whether it's a boardroom meeting, uh, a red carpet media event, a school assembly, stadium stage, or even casual day at the mall, I will have this hair accessory intact. And it's become so signature to my look that I have 40-something-year-old male CEOs asking me about it. And so I started to really consider, well, where did this come from? Is it, I've, is it just some fun thing I like to do? This hair accessory originated from when I was in high school and I was bullied. Just like the blossom, the first blossom of a tree, this is the first thing of Kelly that popped out. And it was my first, we had a school uniform, so it was the only way I could really express myself in a small way. It was a small token of my self-confidence more than, um, more than a meaning of trying to draw attention to myself. But over time, it developed into something more. It taught me a profound lesson of authenticity as it relates to leadership and self-confidence. There are many things that it takes to be successful. 
hard work, grit, perseverance, the list could go on. But one of the things that is neglected most is a strong sense of self, strong sense of self-confidence. I mustn't remind you that the Leaning Tower of Pisa leans because it was built on a, on a ground that could not support its structure in its entirety. Don't build relationships that can't accept you for your entirety, for your authentic self. I've been advised by mentors and senior advisors to ditch the hair accessories and hair bows. <laughs> I've been told that I will lack respect, that I will be seen as too young and too girly, and I will not be able to have the respect of those that I now work with on a constant basis. At the time of the bullied young girl in high school with no self-confidence, I may have complied. But now, I can guarantee you that I would not be standing here speaking to you today if I conformed to industry standards. I to each their own opinion, and I welcome the feedback as always. But I do consider now and think to them, if I was to develop, if, I, if a leader cannot accept me for, respect me as a leader, or see me as an equal with a hair accessory intact, then they're probably not someone I wish to do business with. Someone who cannot accept you for your authentic, true self in its entirety, not the part that fits into the box of your industry or your profession. That's where true relationships are built. That's the foundation to success. Authentic leadership is about finding success while staying true to who you are. Staying true to who you are is often what gives you that success, that edge that makes you different, memorable. So I encourage you today to think, what is your significance of expression? Is it a brooch, a scarf, shoes? It doesn't have to be a fashion accessory. It could be a special song, a picture, a color that you have everything in. Just remember, find something that reminds you of you. And don't lose sight of that despite the ups and downs of, leader, of your leadership journey and career, because that's what's going to set you apart, and that's what's going to lead you to your success. Thank you. Hi, I'm Claudia Chan, and I'm the founder of She Summit. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and community. At She Summit, we believe there is a leader and change agent inside everyone, and our goal is to unleash you to lead change from where you are for issues that you care about to benefit your life, your family, your workplace, and even the world. There's so many ways to follow us if you're interested in this leadership content. You can actually subscribe to this YouTube channel, of course, but also visit our website where you can sign up for our newsletter and learn more about our community, new leadership courses that we're rolling out and our 2019 She Summit Conference. And I also just launched a podcast based on my book. It's called the How We Rise Leadership Podcast. So please follow us. There's so many ways to follow us. And I'm so excited for you to join our new generation of leaders to lead change again for our lives and for the world.